Okay, well, we passed the test, uh, mainly because they didn't really test us at all. We have the green light to go on this trip anyway, so we're excited. Uh, I know I'm excited. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nervous at all? A little bit. Oh, there's our truck. Right here, come on. For pet resort. Hey, Emma. Emma's here. <laughs> oh, she loves kittens. Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. Oh, aren't you gorgeous? I'll be just one second. Okay. Oh, it is so heart wrenching dropping <laughs> Emma off. I hope they take good care of her. Gonna miss that little bundle of joy. But gotta do it. She can't go on the boat, which uh, is required to get us into the backcountry. The Long Range Mountains, in Grossmore National Park, located on Newfoundland's west coast. This rugged landscape provides experienced hikers with an opportunity to enjoy a wilderness backpacking trip of four to five days duration. The routes are strictly map and compass traverses across Arctic alpine tundra and windswept barrens. The hiking season is short, lasting from July to late September. Gross Moor National Park is the crown jewel of Newfoundland. The Long Range Traverse is the famous hike that puts you in the heart of it all, and it landed a spot at the top of our bucket list when we saw pictures of it online. It's known for its stunning views and enormous granite walls that plummet deep into the coastal fjords. Once we set off on our own, there will be no trails, no cell service, no people, and no support other than an emergency helivac. 18 helicopter rescues were dispatched last year alone. We do not want to become another statistic, so today we're carefully doing all our preparations and I'm packing the gear that will be essential to our success. As a professional photographer and Fujifilm ambassador, I'll be packing a camera kit and making some tough choices on which lenses and accessories to bring along. Check the direct link to my blog post covering all these details in the video description. Oh, hi. This is my gear closet. This is where I keep all of our backpacking, camping gear, miscellaneous. It's like a bottomless pit in here. My baby, I love this backpack. It's the Deuter Futura Pro 42 liter, and this thing is bomber. It's like going strong after 10 years. It's almost like new, so love this pack. Uh, I trekked through India with this backpack. It's been on countless wilderness adventures with me, like in Alaska. Anyone who knows me, anyone who knows me will tell you that uh, I am a meticulous packer. <laughs> Something about it, like the OCD in me just argh, comes out. And downside is that I usually end up spending an inordinate amount of time packing because I was a Boy Scout and I probably remembered everything and a little extra. And I love like all the gear, the gear aspect. You know, packing light, packing efficiently, and uh, not like forgetting like that one little thing, say camp shoes. One little detail like that can totally make or break the trip. Which brings me to, so this is a survival kit that I've assembled myself. Basically there's these essential items that you're gonna need anytime you go into the wilderness and it's good to have them in a convenient little bag like this so you can just throw it in your pack at any time. Um, but uh, so what I have in mind is a SteriPen for sterilizing water, which is invaluable. Um, I've got a pocket knife. I've got a backup headlamp. It's really lightweight. Um, I've got a lighter in here. I've got some extra rope. I've got some zip ties. Uh, I've got some matches. And I've got this emergency blanket. Um, sunblock and a few little extra spare batteries I think for the headlamp so uh, oh and like some some tape some a roll of gorilla tape so those 
are pretty much the essentials. But yeah, you can put together your own little survival kit like this and it's great to have for um, throwing into your bag when you're going into the wilderness. Here's the pro tip. So for electronics or things like the SteriPen that require batteries, but uh, you don't use them a lot. For instance, I haven't used the SteriPen in months. I don't want the batteries to drain, so what I've done is I've put this piece of plastic in here so that it blocks the circuit and that way the batteries aren't going to drain on me while this is in storage. Which brings me to my uh, solar panels. So these are a Goal Zero brand and they're a few years old, but um, you know, really you can go with other brands that are much cheaper and it's the same technology but uh but this is a 13 and a half watt solar panel here and this is what i'm going to use for charging my camera batteries um i need a little bit more power for for all of that um so that's going to be really handy for camera accessories and then this smaller one which is just a seven watt <clears throat> This is what I'm going to use for charging my cell phone and um, I can attach these to my backpack just while I'm hiking. So this is my primary headlamp right here and it's really cool because this battery here will charge by USB and so my little portable solar panels can plug right into here if the battery gets low. Um, this is a super solid headlamp that uh, it's really bright um, and then it's got this lens here that I can use to diffuse it or widen the beam. I'll uh, link to all these things down in the description below if you guys are interested. Uh, these Chacos are going to be invaluable when we're crossing streams. Hopefully the streams aren't like raging, but um, I can't be getting my hiking boots wet unnecessarily. So these are also good for uh, just around camp, you know, at the end of the day. So. These Chacos are awesome because they have Vibram soles and uh, they're bomber. Okay, so this is what I'm going to keep my clothes in. It's a waterproof dry bag, right? But um, the way it works is that I put all my clothes in here so that I know that no matter what happens, I'm going to have dry clothes at all times. So I put the clothes inside here and then as I roll it down, it has this event so that the air can actually press out and go nice and compact. And of course, uh, jet boil, which I like to use for boiling water and cooking our food. This, these are really nice because you get the canister inside, all the components go right inside of here. And it's even a, a measuring cup right here. Then you can drink out of it. All right, so some of you are gonna laugh at this one, but go ahead, laugh away, I don't care. <laughs> but you know when you're in the backcountry and you really need to use the restroom, and I mean number two, it's it can be tough to like find a stick, dig a hole, go through that whole situation, especially if it's an emergency. So I like to use this. It's actually called an iPood. Um, <laughs> what it does is it just opens up like this. Instantly I have a little trowel and also toilet paper inside the handle there. Laugh as you may, but when it's an emergency and you really have to take care of business, this thing gets it done. <laughs> well, this is how I like to roll when I'm actually hiking with my camera. What I like to do is have my camera clipped here in this carabiner. My hands are free so I can be holding trekking poles or I can be, you know, just like using my arms. I can always whip it out and like, you know, photograph something at a moment's notice. If it's inclement weather or really dirty, and I don't want the camera getting wet or dusty, then I've got this Optech case here. So then, you know, as it's hanging down like this, it's nice and protected, um, but I can still get to it really quickly without having to like pull it out of my bag or anything like that. This is the system that I really like as far as taking photos on the trail. You got the map and compass? Yeah, there she okay. be. <laughs> we are headed into the visitor center to take the map and compass test. It's an oral exam and they <laughs> will they will fail you. Depending on the weather, it'll take four or five days to cross the plateau to Grossmorn Mountain and return to Highway 430. Pre-trip orientation is mandatory. A briefing with an experienced warden will help you assess that you have the skills and knowledge needed for this hike. It's just a little slideshow. Do you mind you if I get some video? No. Okay, thanks. So I don't want to be in it, but you can have it. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. So you have to be completely self-reliant out there. There is no trail. Mm -hmm. If you're completely lost, um, stop and get comfortable. Make yourself visible. So you can <laughs> take bear spray. I'm neutral on that. So do you guys know what Tuckamore is? I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the, it's that dense vegetation that you see up the coastline. A search is only initiated after your return date and allowances for bad weather. If it's really bad, just take extra care while navigating. Um, I did it in so one night, bad. and her whole body was eaten alive. <laughs> but you can treat it with antihistamines. You shouldn't have that big of an issue though. And gear should be suitable. It's starting to get really cold at night. That's what it looks like. So it's a satellite message received by the Department of National Defense, and they found us. Come in a helicopter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't track you. It just sends your coordinates. Okay. So this is a uh, emergency transponder, and it will signal a helicopter if we're in an emergency situation. So good to have, but I'm hoping that we won't need this. Thank <laughs> you.